Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm gonna take you along for uh, well, it'll be a double feature video for you guys. I'm gonna be testing out the shocker hitch on the smaller gooseneck, and we're gonna be towing a uh, the little excavator out to a job. The job's kind of a little bit out of town. Went, spent some time yesterday. Went and looked at the job. Realized I could take the little excavator, which makes it easier on me. I don't have to take the big rig all the way out of town. But I wanted to test this shocker on the small trailer. Uh, for one, this trailer empty, I've said it before, it's pretty rough riding because it's such a short trailer. It's a little bit balanced and it does a little huck and buck stuff. So I got the shocker on there now. I got about 25 PSI in it. Boy, it made a big difference just driving over here. But we're gonna throw about a 12,000 pound excavator on there and see how it does. And uh, we're just getting some logs for another tree outfit. They did a job a while back and their machine wasn't big enough to move the logs. So I'll show you guys that. But for now, we're just headed up to Dad's pick up a little machine, leave this one up at his house. And yeah, we gotta do some more testing with the shocker. First initial idea with getting the shocker was gonna throw it on the diamond seat, no problem. But then I thought the shocker might work great being on this little trailer because it's it's kind of a miserable bird to haul with so shockers definitely improved its ride i guarantee that just uh a little son of a gun i missed Hey, boom. Hi, Emma. Hi, Emma. Yeah, Emma. I'm liking this a lot on this little trailer. So you guys can tell, I adjusted the height on the gooseneck so it matches what it should be. So the axles with those torsions are sitting level. Tilt deck. Load that bad boy. Right, buddies. Watch it, it barely even tickled it a little bit when it gammed over, tilted the deck. But when you take off, especially the stick shift, if you don't have the right airbag pre-SI in there, it'll collapse it. And then when you push in the clutch, all that weight comes forward. So you gotta make sure you got it right or else it's kinda, it's not gonna be worth it for you. Look at Boone up in there. All right, last time I hauled this machine was on the bigger trailer. And I ran it at 50 PSI. So we'll get this one. I'll go just under it because this trailer doesn't weigh as much. I'll leave my air hose hooked up on the back here so I can adjust this. I haven't rigged up my in cab control like you would have for your uh, airbags that would go on your rear axle. One step at a time.
feel any difference? <laughs> Sorry dude, I'm gonna just take my time. Try to cut me out. Dad and I just got to this job. I'm gonna let him run the excavator today. I'm gonna be chainsaw man. Gotta skid all these logs from up top of the hill past the propane tank. Andy wanted them right here for the log truck, but that's a nasty driveway, so we're gonna set them out here in the blackberries. Well, I'm gonna scan all of them with the metal detector, all the butts, make sure nobody drove any nails in there. And square up the ends. Brian, I'm going to have to bump some knots for your crew here and square up some ends. But, shocker, I don't know, i got to play with the PSI some more. Definitely it was pretty nice towing with it empty on a low PSI, but I don't know. Difficult combo, that trailer and that truck. Rough riding truck, rough riding trailer with those torsions, but I'll get her figured out. Not necessarily roasting but things we wouldn't do they fell this tree and went alongside this oak and kinked it over at a 45 they could easily cut that off through through the chipper and a lot of this busted up wood if they would have moved the logs out from underneath it first they wouldn't have broke it when they fell the stobs and then cutting a high stump and then cutting it off now it's got this big old round of wood could be firewood if you can move that kind of stuff by hand most homeowners don't have a tractor plus it's up above this guy's house so if that thing got weird on us working or mother nature and gravity took put it right through the guy's house I really like that but going through bumping all the knots and pretty much recutting every one of these logs Jagged for metal as I go. I gotta cut this old tree down so he can get through here at the excavator. Another thing to note, they buck most of these, but the problem if they buck them is they sit here with tip to tip kind of right here, they always end up bluing. Pieces of the log are still kind of together. It grows this fungus in between the cut. It causes this blue stain you ship that to the mill, it's worth less for us. But for some reason, the sawmill, once they cut that into boards, that blue stain, they charge you more for it. The mill, the scaler looks at that, and they don't pay as much for this. So the load's not worth near what it could be if they would have just left them all long. Because you come down here, this is one of them. They did leave long, and I cut it today, and it'll get shipped to the mill today. But look how nice and clear that is. 
that's what you want to see right there it's not I mean it's got knots and stuff but it's not covered with blue stain same with these down here those are ones I cut so if they would have left them long we could have got the accurate measurements because each one of these was pretty much off unfortunately not one of them was cut accurately but somebody did take their time to put their initials right there it looks like a goofy Superman symbol got time for doing art but not time for cutting them and bumping all the knots and I did bump every knot again a couple I didn't mm-hmm but we're almost done oh there we go groomed out our track so it doesn't look so terrible actually I think it looks pretty nice to be honest with you follow him back out and Andy just showed up one lane road kind of sucks but we're gonna do Got. How much did you go for? Well, if you can't get all those on there, it's on the neighbor's property right now, so. Those were already fire when he didn't expect us to take those, but I was trying to be nice to him, so if you gotta leave a couple, that's fine. Right here. Yeah, so those two are probably the seventy six thousand he says right now. He said he's well he's already kinda heavy for his length. Well, V belt just had to stop and get a pizza on the way home. Oh the bus is gonna get me. Just kidding, I'm starving now, I'll tell you that much. We had to bump the shocker, well I lowered the pressure on the shocker to uh, 40 PSI, that didn't help anything at all. Went up to 60, and that definitely, it feels a lot better now. Could probably even go a little bit more. This little trailer, we got quite a bit of tongue weight, but... Ugh. Well, safe to say I'm still learning this bird here. Got 60 PSI in it now. Not gonna haul home empty like that. I hope earlier when I came up here with the empty trailer, I had uh, about 30 in it. Boy, it made such a difference with an empty trailer. It's being such a lightweight trailer, it only weighs like 3,000 pounds, maybe. Then I got these 16 plies. Those things are cranked up to like 90 plus PSI. This thing with them torsion axles, it's not the smoothest ride. Empty and I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever make this thing a perfectly smooth ride <laughs> or even close to it. But uh, I'm going to take this thing home. Not the tractor, but the brush rake. Yama! Yama! Thank you. I needed someone to weigh it down. Needed the extra little oomph. Look how big she's getting. Huh. Oh, Amos. Oh, Amos. Stay. About the heaviest duty brush rake for a skid steer I've ever seen. And that thing is barely on there. Barely.
Now that we got the 12, we can actually use this thing. I'm gonna take it home, do a little bit more fitting with it. <laughs> you see, the complaint Dad's got with this rig here it doesn't have the extra linkage for the dump mechanism for the bucket, so you can't quite get enough dump and you can't get enough scoop out of it. But I guess he got that thing kind of balanced. Ain't <laughs> whatever. We'll go home with it. It's got enough tongue weight. Oh no, it's just cold. Check her out. First gen. That old boy's been driving that truck for a long time. Never see him hauling butt. Because it's probably stock. But I don't see him hot riding around town. He's always just kind of kind of cruising. Man. You know how you make traffic lights turn green? Take the truck out of gear. You know how to make the traffic clear up? Get the truck out of gear. You can't see that weight on there. So I knocked the pressure down to 40 PSI for just that brush rake. This is where I, I really can say that shocker hitch is doing a nice job. And uh, it's when it's, this trailer is empty. Because it's so short and it's like goofily balanced. I need to hog the other lane so I gotta, man, gosh dang it. We'll take her wide right here. Maybe we'll get it. There's so many freaking cars. All right, we might have an opening. Is that way clear? Yep. <laughs> Towing this thing empty with 40 PSI in there. Feels nice. Boom, boom. Boom don't care, he'll sleep everywhere. Everywhere and anywhere. Those of you guys that wanted to see where I'm driving to, I'm just driving down the highway. That old oh man almost dropped the camera. Be able to drop down the weight just a little bit more. I'll pull her over up here and put her down to 30. Alright, I got her knocked down to 30 PSI. <laughs> it almost feels like it just takes the weight of the trailer tongue off. Because, like, driving with the 5500, it always feels like a rough ride when it's an empty truck. But having that hitch on there, I don't know. It almost seems like you can't feel the trailer weighing down the truck. So, the ride's kind of the same as if I were empty. Need to, I really need to put the 3500 to the test with one of these hitches on there, see how it behaves. Need to downshift. I'm in fifth gear. Yeah. Definitely a lot more comfortable without a machine on there. This hitch is nice for that. Well, as I can say, it's a, it's a two liter day. Chugged that on the way home right there. No, I'm just kidding. That was from all the pizza we had like three hours ago. I just grabbed the final draw of it before I left dad's house. But this shocker hitch, the versatility is great with this rig because it's just not set for one, you know, weight scale. You got all kinds of different options. That's why I wanted to try it on this smaller trailer like the. Uh, Gen Y over there, if I put it on this trailer, I don't think I'd get too much results out of it because that thing is just, it's rated for the 30K, so I'm sure them torsions in it are, you know, stiffer than nails. But I think for an idea with Shocker, and I don't know if they've done this or not, to have a little standalone kit with a little battery and stuff so you could have your own air compressor maybe on the trailer. So, like what I'm doing, I got air on the truck, so I can, you know, I got a hose right here and I got my... I just I haven't actually plumbed this officially in because I didn't know where I was going to put it either in a toolbox or up here. I probably have to just screw that thing to somewhere here or something. 
But I got air on the truck, so I can hop out and I can air it up. It's not that big of a deal. I can air it down without worrying about trying to figure out how I'm going to get some air back in the bag. But towing this thing, I did go at 40, did 50, 45, 60, and with that Mini X on there, which in total is probably like a 15,000 pound load total, um, which isn't bad at all. And uh, at 60 PSI, it seemed to do really well, uh, quite a bit better than the rest. Maybe 65 could even be just, you know, that much better. But towing empty with that on there, whew, that was nice and mellow. Because this thing, I tell you, it's not the smoothest riding trailer when it's empty. It is, it's very rough. And then when you have stiff suspension on the 5500, it's even worse. So, uh, yeah, this trailer. Uh, a lot of dollars right there and a lot of um, bad experiences and if you guys know the brand this trailer is I wouldn't even say their name on here because I don't want to give them any name shout at all because they're made in uh, my town here and just terrible service the trailers not strong enough in my opinion um, dad had to reinforce all of it when he first got it probably spent two grand worth of his time and parts on it <laughs> But I'm trying to make the best out of it because it, you know, you can't just let money go to waste. It's too small of a weight rating trailer to haul the 12. Well, I can haul the 12, but I can't haul the multi head on it. I'm trying, I'd like to get a bumper pole that I can haul trucks and um, the 12 on. So it'll be pretty much the same thing, bumper pole version as this with ramps. And it'll be four feet longer than this. And it will probably have the same title that one has over there. That'll be next year if all goes well and I hit the lottery. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I just wanted to give um, Shocker some more trial use. I'm still going to keep running it. I really I need to get the in-cab switch set up so I can adjust this on the fly. I think that'll make a world of difference, but that's you know that's what we got. But right now I'm going to head down to the shop. I want to pressure off uh, Dad's new truck because I got to do some TLC to it. I'm sure you guys already saw that video, but I don't know. We'll see you guys on the next one. If you guys have ran Shocker, I know a couple of you guys have, comment below what kind of weight you're hauling gross. Trailer and machine or truck or whatever, how much weight you're pulling behind your rig with the Shocker, if it's bumper pull or uh, gooseneck like this. I want to know because uh, I have I don't have much experience at all with any of these things. And my you know thoughts is it's just a lot more moving parts, but I wanted to give them a try because... Uh, the 5500 I'm looking for any edge I can get without really having to work thousands and thousands of dollars um, on the truck because I'm tired of working on the truck <laughs> believe me I'm tired of working on the truck it's doing good and we're just going to keep it running as it is and if you guys are curious each one of these hitches they do run about a thousand bucks a piece so but they're riding a little bit smoother each run now anyway guys like comment and please subscribe to the channel I'd really appreciate that. We made it over 30,000. Let's keep rocking and rolling. But later on, guys. See ya.